Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Edge of Patel show. Um, firstly, I know, I know, my bad, my bad. Took a handful of weeks off. And honestly, as I'm recording this, I don't even know if this will go live on time. Uh, reason for the absence. I got a job. I got a job. And it was like I told y'all, right? I was going through it, right? The room got pretty dark. Things got pretty tight. And you start kind of feeling that feeling of... Uh, you start having that feeling of where love, like, you know, oh my gosh, the walls are caving in, the roof's getting a little bit tighter. What do I do? Have I failed? What, what, where do I navigate from here? And I had this feeling initially, I've had that feeling before, right? I had that feeling before in like college and stuff where you're like waiting until the last minute for everything. And then if you just don't give up, right? Like I've always said, if you just don't give up, things pan out a little bit. Things pan out, things end up a little bit different, but you just keep going. But yes, I finally got a job. Uh, whether I'm open to giving out the details and all that stuff, you know, just follow me on LinkedIn. I'm sure I'll have to change it on there. It Even as like the background clearing was happening and stuff, I was still applying to new jobs because it's just like, what if, you know, what if these guys just say, hey, you know what? Sorry, but... You know, we had some conversations, yada, yada, and we're going to have to pull this position. So there's just, I, I'm i already a skeptic as it is. And then when you start feeding me the the experience of having job listings removed, people kind of ghosting you and all that stuff, you get skeptical about everything. And then when something seems too good, right, as far as I wanted this job, I wanted this position at this company, and it worked out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Bro, at one point, I was interviewing at a place called Me Undies. Now, a lot of people don't know what that is, but I, I've used their service before, some underwear subscription service. You get one every month or something like that. I was like, oh shit, you know what? It wouldn't be bad. You get a little startup vibes, it's super close to home. I could walk to the office. But do I really want to tell people I work there? You know, I've never had a problem with anywhere I've ever worked telling them like, hey, yeah, this is where I work. You know, people sometimes have a question. Oh, what do you do there? Oh, what is that company? But people have a general idea where it's like, oh, okay, that's pretty neat. Oh, you work for a defense company? That's pretty neat. You work for this luxury retailer? That's pretty neat. Telling people I work at an underwear company, an underwear company that people don't even wear, right? How how many people in your circle that you know shop at MeUndies? Is that even a conversation that people have? But you see what I'm saying? The other place that I was interviewing for, um, I think in one of the previous episodes, I called it Company 4, the company that just pulled the position at the last minute. Princess Polly, another retailer, where I was like, okay, you know what? This will suck because I won't. It feels weird. It just felt weird as a data analyst kind of just, you're combing through the site over and over again. And all I'm looking at is this teeny bobber clothing, teen clothing, teen clothing. Oh my gosh, wow, we should do this to improve this. Is that somewhere I want to tell people? So I was willing to go for these companies, right? At the end of the day, I just want a job. I just want to work somewhere. I just want some money in my account. I just want to pay rent. So then when it finally worked out at this place, um, I wasn't comfortable at all. You know, I I was happy. Don't get me wrong. Boy, I got off that call, smile, ear to freaking ear across my face, pacing around in the room. And I was like, you know what? I need to level expectations for a little bit. I need to level this out a little bit. And then I'll step outside, tell each of the good news. And then we go from there. We don't need to celebrate, right? Let's not go out and do all that stuff. We don't need to do all that yet. But for now, you know, we can at least breathe a little bit. Where I've been unemployed for, at that time, it was about three months, right? My severance was 12 weeks. Now, don't get me wrong, right? I'm measuring it in severance uh, time. But as far as the money goes, right, I could probably breathe for another month and a half. If things got really bad, we considered moving. When Isha lost her job, we were just like, should we move back to Texas? What, what do we do? 
We both have mortgages. Do we both want to keep paying rent? You're already in the city that you don't save money in. So what's next? So then all of this, right? You finally get a job. You get this chance to breathe. And then life stuff comes back up. Now, this is all revolving around where I've been for the last two weeks and how, why there hasn't been an episode. This just come down to like, I, I just haven't, I haven't had the, one, it all comes down to discipline, right? Discipline, number one reason, that's on me, my bad. Second, I just didn't feel like doing it. Like, I, I just felt like enjoying what I was enjoying and not taking the time out to record, edit, do this, do that. I just did not want to be on my laptop. I wanted to do lazy boy things. I wanted to watch TV. I wanted to hang out with friends. I wanted to go drink with some people. So then shortly after this, right? Shortly after everything was good, got the job, background clears. You'll start on this day. You'll make this much. Um, this is what you need to do beforehand. Go pee in a cup, all that stuff. Uh, I go to Houston, Texas for my friend Sean's engagement. Yes. Uh, one of the final guys in the group to get engaged in. I don't mean that as any diss. I oh shit, my bad. <laughs> I get to Houston on Thursday or Friday night, and we're all together back in the house, you know. And and like I, I've told y'all this before, I love a good just chilling at the house drinking party. It doesn't is that even called a party, right? Kickback, I guess. Stayed up till like six, six thirty, just hanging out, talking, shooting this shit, and and it's just like. We haven't been together for so long, right? This whole group of friends. And so when it finally happens, you, you just kind of, you, you just have this elation. Elation? What's the word I'm looking for here? You're feeling excited, right? Everyone's back under the same roof. Everyone's, you know, obviously living their own lives. Some people are in different states, different cities, but here we all are. The engagement goes good. The actual engagement itself, it's tough, man. I'm I'm still like obviously I'm I'm always happy for my boys that are getting engaged or even if it's like uh, a girlfriend of mine I, I love seeing that happen, but the f event itself I'm just burnt out, bro. I'm burnt out of getting to the event. Ooh, let's go wait in this bar line for an hour. Okay, now let's sit down. Let's listen to a couple speeches. Okay, our dance is next. Let's go do our dance. Oh shit, we messed up a handful of times. Oh oh well time to go to the bar again oh man i guess we should eat i guess we should eat so we don't you know just throw up later okay we go eat we sit down now this music is blaring oh yeah now now it's time to dance for three hours and it's just like bro like i i'm just tired of it right and it's the same music it's the same music whether you want to uh, admit it or not it's the same stuff and this is no diss to you know like my, my boy right like it could have been anyone's engagement, but this is just what it is. After you go to so many friends, engagements, weddings, uh, this party, that party, even birthdays look the same now. I, it's just hard. It's just hard to get over that hump. But overall, I wanted to say congrats to my, my boy, Sean, uh, his fiance, Monica. Um, Sean was a dude that was checking in on me quite a bit during the unemployment days. Now, I, I don't know if he was doing it for a quick laugh. You know what I'm saying? But it's very helpful where you just, if you sit with all that negativity shit in your head, it's tough, bro. Oh, it's tough. People would literally call to check in on me and I would deny their calls and I would answer other people's calls because it was like, I know I can, I can say all the fucked up shit. I'm, I'm cursing a little too much. So I do apologize for that. Um, I know I can say all the messed up stuff, messed up stuff in my head to these people because one, I know it'll help me just get it off. Two, I know they're not going to meet it with some bullshit. They're going to meet it with like, yeah, you know what? You might be screwed. And that's sometimes what you need to hear where it's like, okay, see, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not just always stressed out for no reason. The thing that I'm stressing about is quite valid. Now tell me I'm valid. And sometimes that helps. Sometimes that's all you need is someone to just validate your negativity for a little bit. And then you just keep it moving. Just keep it moving. Keep it going. Going back before I keep going down with the congratulations, I need to finish out the, the new job topic. Um, I got a job, right? It took 12 full weeks. I start in a couple more weeks, but it had been quite a journey. 
I know I keep saying this, but I will have a video a little bit later on. I'm going to try to aim for the end of September going through the full process and I'm going to try to chapter it out. And, it, and it's by no means to be like, oh, I'm some career coach. I'm a professional that can help you get your job. It's literally just, hey, this is what I went through. This is my perspective, because with all the people that have gotten laid off and that still may be looking for a job, in addition to the people that unfortunately will go through this later in their life. I just wanted that source out there of things that I did, things that I wish I did, how I navigated through some waters, what worked, what didn't work, you know, all that shit where it's like maybe just might help someone a little bit. So that video will come out a little bit later. But I want to share with you guys that we finally got through that freaking rut and hopefully brighter days ahead. You know, so wild is I haven't I haven't done this in so long. I'm, I'm like running out of breath while I'm talking like I just went up a flight of stairs or something. I feel it's like a muscle, you know. So later. After Houston for the engagement, I go back home to Dallas, Texas. Um I had a friend's birthday party. My boy Vishva, it was his 30th birthday party. Now, I've I've told you guys this theory before. Um 30th birthday parties are pretty big when you're not married yet. Now, I mean this is no diss. This is just a fact of life. Oftentimes, people that are not married by the age of 30, their 30th birthday party is quite larger. And by married, I just mean like you're in the funnel to get married, right? Whether you're engaged, whether you're a uh, relationship, no, even relationship, you fall into the not married category. But if you're engaged onwards, more than likely your 30th birthday party will be a little bit smaller. It's not as grand, maybe. Maybe some friends are missing because it's like, ah, you know what? We already did everything for you for your wedding, all that stuff. My boy Vishwa, single, one of my best candidates I have out there. Um, we go back home to Dallas, Texas. I, I hang out with my family for a week. So that was fun. In addition to preparing for court, which we'll get to in a second. This episode is all over the place, but it's literally just a recap of my last couple of weeks. We go to Dallas, hanging out with family. Birthday comes along, and it was a ton of fun, man. It it, it was it was something I was like, damn, you know, this is going to be a lot, right? Like, it's going to be a lot of activities in addition to, am I balancing enough family and friends? This is always a dilemma. People that live away from home probably notice. But honestly, this is probably something that everyone goes through where it's just like, Am I spending enough time with these people? And I spending enough time over here. You know, I want to spend more time with family, but they got this going on. Oh, you know, at the same time, I also want to just kick it at home and do nothing. How do I balance all of this stuff? Right. How do I share the news with my parents that I just got a job? I want to celebrate with them. I want to go hang out with my sister, brother-in-law, nephews, all this stuff. I want to hang out with friends at the same time. Um, birthday comes along. We do a lot of fun things. We go to Deluca Gaucho, which is like a Brazilian steakhouse, but with pizza instead of meat. Uh, we go out, kick it for a little bit. And it, it's always fun just doing like that long night of drinking, right? You're not really taking shots, but you have a drink or two at seven. Then at dinner, you have a couple more drinks. Then you go to another place, have a couple more drinks. And then by, by 10, 11, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm having a blast. The music's not great. But I'm having a blast. And that was what Saturday night of this birthday party was like. The next day, we had a pickleball court. Uh, this was part, I don't know, part three of the birthday. Pickleball court. And this is my first time playing that. Um, I can understand how people get into it. Pickleball, pickleball, pickleball. Fastest growing sport in America. I'm thinking about trying to open up a facility of my own. You know, maybe sharing it with some friends, seeing how we can go. But it's 100% taken over everything. Even all these apartment complexes and stuff, they've knocked down all these basketball courts and just put like three pickleball courts in its place. Can y'all hear that siren going off? So I've always heard of the craze of pickleball, right? But to finally engage in it, finally play the sport with people that are way better than me. I've never really even played a racket sport. I've never even been good at ping pong. But I will say, 
the place in general was just a vibe. We went to Chicken and Pickle, and I'm sure every city has their own version of, you know, like this pickleball drinking thing. It's the new, it's the new wave, right? Like, hey, you guys, it's a bar, but with basketball hoops in the back. There, ooh, it's a bar, but there's darts you can throw. This, it, it's, it's everything, right? How do I get the Dallas people to be, or how do I get people in a suburban city to do this drinking? and play this sport so they can have the best of both worlds i guess a beer garden whatever overall a great time pickleball i will say i'm not sure if i will be a frequent flyer isha was saying she wants to play more i just don't i maybe it's just because i'm not good at it you know and it's like do i really want to be good at this you know do you want to put the time in for this it's just one of those things Later that night, we have a birthday party, and I was kind of taking it easy. I was taking it easy because, you know what, the next day, I do have to prepare for court because I don't want to be hungover. So then that concludes the birthday party. We were able to hit up uh, Vishwa one more time for drinks before we had to leave town. But next, we get into court. I go to court fully prepared, printed out a bunch of documents, had my case ready. Now, remember, this is because my neighbor at the house that I owned is suing me for noise complaints that my tenants caused. I'm not going to go into too much details because this is still an open case. I go to court and the person that the plaintiff, my neighbor subpoenaed, which means that person has to come to court and testify. Didn't show up. So the judge immediately pushes the court date another 30 days. Now, I in the car, I was just so angry because, you you, you know, you sacrifice time with other people, You sacrifice time with other people. You already procrastinated your ass off just to prepare all this shit, prepare all this stuff. You you, you get into this mindset, too. Right. Okay, I have to go in there and do this and this. I'm going to have to talk to this. I'm going to have to defend this. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to do all this stuff that I don't do on a normal basis. I have to go in there and be a particular way and a particular person. Now you go in there fully prepared. And before I even say a sentence, the case already gets pushed. The hearing gets pushed. Just because someone didn't show up. Now that that's demoralizing and just just angering. I, I was just. I didn't even know what to think in the car. And Isha was with me and she was, she was just as irate because it's like, bro, this is so dumb. And I'm trying not to get, uh, you know, overly expressive about it because I don't want somehow this to be used against me in a court of law, but it's almost silly. All that to say, that was just another part of my week where it was like, okay, do I really want to sit down and record a podcast, edit it, publish it while I need to also work on this? You know, I'm also trying to be lazy. I'm trying to watch Peaky Blinders a little bit. I'm on season five. I'm almost at the end. I need to hang out with friends. I have a birthday party event. It was just what it was. And I do apologize for the lack of episodes, but it didn't stop there. Shortly after that, Isha and I made a plan to, well, it was a plan that was kind of already up in the air because uh, she had a family birthday party for her cousin. So sorry for her uncle in London. And it was a 50th birthday party and they do it pretty, you know, pretty big. They do it pretty big. And I thought it would be decent for me to go there and kind of get an initial introducing to her side of the family. Because it's like, okay, you know, I know more than likely they may come, may or may or may not come to the wedding. So then I would like that to not be the first time that I meet them, right? It's always fun to be like, oh, hey, it's you again. Hey, we, we don't have to go through this whole, hey, what do you do for a living? Oh, are, are, is this guy even cool? Do we even like this person? You kind of get that out of the way with the first time meeting them. In addition to that, I have family in the more suburban part of London that may not make it to the wedding. So then it also served that purpose where it's like, okay, I can introduce her to them. All that to say, I'm currently in London. Uh, We got here sometime last week. I'm recording this on a Saturday. So we got here probably two days ago and I was able to visit my future company office in London 
great time. After that, Isha was just kind of showing me around, right? Showing me restaurants, showing me bars. I've never really stayed a decent amount of time in London City. I've visited a handful of times, but I've always stayed in, you know, the burbs. I've always stayed where the family is. I never got to do the kind of city life. Uh, it's just what it was. And Isha has, how many times am I going to say her name in here? Jeez Louise, it's like a dedication episode. Um, she has lived in London before. So it was so cool not having to research anything or, oh, you know, ask, ask chat GBT, what are the best bars and stuff like that? Just have a tour guide built in. And, and it's honestly like, I'm not even looking to do all that kind of stuff. I'm just trying to chill, I'm just trying to chill, eat, drink, just have fun. London has some amazing food. In addition to that, you don't have to drive a lick. The public transportation is pretty much like New York. There's subways, there's overground, the buses. And so all that, all that is just, we, we finally get here, hang out. Now the birthday party is in a couple of hours. It's 4:49 while I record this in a couple more hours, we have the birthday party. And then after that, we're actually going to try to go to Paris. So the day that this episode releases, hopefully I'm in Paris. We haven't even booked flights or a train or anything like that, but this is kind of the joy of it where it's like, Hey, you know, we've had this summer. We've had a summer that's kind of, you know, hasn't been the most tasty right it's it's kind of put us down a handful of times we got engaged at the start of it but you know it's been a handful of kind of just punches in the stomach over and over again so let's just get out get our mind off of things you know you come back from travel with a little bit more personally with a, a little bit more kind of a motivated spirit all right you know what i just did i just have my fun let's go back let's get back to work let's do this thing let, let, let's go you know get back into the, the the vortex of the nine to five until we count our days for another vacation and it, it was so funny it's like uh it happens naturally when you lose your job you start counting pennies Ooh, the starbucks runs do reduce dramatically your partner loses their job you, 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 you not, you not eating out at all. You're not even scrolling through TikTok Cause that may not, that may make you buy something. You're not doing any of this stuff. Now, as soon as you get a job, you don't even get a paycheck yet. And you are already shopping. Ooh, you back to traveling. Ooh, we eating out again tonight. Ooh, uh, wine. You're having a glass. I'm having a glass. I guess we should just do a bottle. Oh, it's $98. It's fine. Mathematically, it still makes sense. It's always been a thing. And I think it's just natural where if you make more, you will spend more. Now, technically, together we're making less, but we're still spending more than we were. We're still spending more than our summer of, you know, oh, shit, we got to make sure we do groceries. We got to make sure we meal prep, make sure we don't do this, don't do that. Oh, it's Saturday night. Guess what we're doing? We're staying indoors. We're staying indoors. You don't spend a dime. And I feel like that's, I don't know if it's like an American thing, because I've I've watched a handful of kind of just how people live here. And there's a couple of things. One, London City itself, right? Much more on the go. Very New York vibes, very New York vibes, or you're moving, you're moving, you're moving, you, you got to do this, you got to do this, you, you're, you're moving until you, you know, you party at night and then you get back to it. In the kind of outskirts, the more suburban areas, sorry, more, uh, the, the, yeah, I guess the burbs, it's so much more chill. People don't really like keep on striving for more, striving for more. They, they, they do their job. They go to their local pub. They hang out with their friends for a little bit. Then they go home. And I do like that where you're not, you know, saving up this big drinking binge to be on Friday night, Saturday night, and then back at it where you're working from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. five days a week. I do think you should work. I, I'm not saying like, oh my gosh, we work too hard as a society. No, but it's just having a good balance, a decent balance. I understand America is all about, oh, you want more? You want a bigger house? You need to work more. You need to work more. You need to do this more. You want, you got a bigger house? Now you got to get a nicer car. You got a nicer car? Make sure you get a nicer wife. What? You end up just in this loop, this grand loop of things. 
And it's not the worst, right? If you can temper off when you get to a certain point and you say, hey, you know what? I think I have enough and I want to just live here and figure out what that looks like and how that is more sustainable. So the idea of always wanting more, wanting more, wanting more, that's a biggest, this such a big American thing. In addition to that, the hotel we were staying at, we went to breakfast. Um, it was a little embarrassing. I asked where the breakfast plates were. And he says, sir, it's, it's, it's that plate right there. It was, it was a decent sized plate, but it wasn't like a big plate. You know, in America, it was the plate that they kind of give you for like, oh, hey, you know, this, this is what you put your muffins and donuts on. This is your sweets plate. I was like, yo, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get that protein trying to get them hash browns, trying to get them baked beans. Where's the regular size plate? He says, sir, that is the regular size plate. I said, oh shit. That's, that's the fucking obese American in me speaking. That's my bad. That's my bad. I apologize. It's just, it, oops. You know, and then it made me look around and be like, oh my gosh, no one is fat in here. There's not really any obese people in here. There's some big people, right? There's some medium sized people. But no one's really obese here. Oh, obesity in America, that's nothing new. I get it. But it's just something that I noticed where it's like, oh shit, you know, like these, the people in Europe just eat normal, right? The plate's smaller, the portion is smaller, the people are smaller. It's funny how simple the equation is. And I do have an episode coming up where I do want to talk about like, uh, just general health stuff where it's like as someone that has stayed relatively consistent with health and diet and by relatively consistent I mean like my ups and downs have been consistent right I'm not consistent in health I I love donuts I love fried chicken I'm not the healthiest person anywhere close to that but I know what's happening with my body when I'm doing that and then what's not happening when I'm not doing that but that episode is for a later time the heart of that episode still revolves around food. Food, the main culprit. And America wants to push that shit, right? Oh, hey, for, for 28 more dollars, you can get, you know, the, the prime ribeye. You can get double mashed potatoes on that. That's not a thing here. It's not a thing here. They, they, they want to encourage you to not get extras here. Hey, you got enough. Isha and I burned through a pizza each at the restaurant last night. And I, I, th I was like, these people are looking at us like they know those are Americans right there. They didn't just share a pizza and share a dessert. They both had a pizza. Those are Americans right there. That was me blabbing at y'all for a quick little 30 minutes. And I wanted to, one, make sure I get an episode out so there's not three weeks I take off. Two, apologize for the tardiness in addition to the absence and just to let y'all know, when I get back to town and I start work, the podcast is not going anywhere from what I know. I'm going to try to keep it up, get some more guests, as I've always said. It's just, I, I've just felt like taking a little bit of a breath, just kind of staying off the mic, staying off of, oh shit, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this, and just taking it easy for a second, enjoying the sunrise, having a pint, you know what I'm saying? Just taking it easy until I go right back to America, hop on that hamster wheel, and tell y'all on a weekly basis. That's all I got for y'all this week. I'll see y'all next week. And goodbye.